So now we are very close to have the uh, prediction results from the uh, sleep model that we uh, made earlier to detect uh, dolphins in, in this uh, recording. So let's just wait uh, the last 10 seconds for, for this to finish off. Um, but just to summarize, we first annotated a set of data, then we uh, trained a model in sleep, and finally we have now applied that model to the detection results. And we get the results here. We can see that it has analyzed uh, about a thousand frames, and in 537 frames um, there were instances uh, located or predicted, and that also means that there are about 500 frames without any frames uh, or instances uh, detected. We can see it here. Down here, we can actually see where it has detected any activity in it. So if we take one of the images here, we can see that it has actually detected the animal over here. Um, and we can also see where it has located the key points. And that's not my annotation, but actually what has been uh, done by the system. And similarly here. We can see it has located the beak, the, the blowhole, and, and the tail attachment, and the two endpoints of, of the flukes. So now we got a lot of data, and we need to do something interesting uh, with that. Um, and one thing we can do is to go up here and then say, say export analysis CSV for the current video. And we can then uh, just choose where we, we want to have it. Um, just place it down in this name uh, predictions. And let's take a look and at what is actually present in here. So we can uh, open this um, file. Let's just use uh, a text editor for this. Um, Okay. And we'll make a new document here. Just call it untitled. And we can save it. Um just to the location we, we have here. Visualization like this. And at this point we need to load the data and we can see if we can plot any of that uh, afterwards. And that's a CSV file and we can use the content in here. And finally, we can open it here and see what we actually have of information. We have some uh, information about which track it is. If we are tracking more than a single animal, we can have an identifier here. We have the frame number. We have some kind of score of the certainty of uh, what has been found. We have the location of the beak over time and a score for detecting the beak and similar for the blowhole and tail attachment and, and so on. So these are all the, the good stuff uh, we have in place here. Just to make um, an easy or quick uh, first plot here, we could uh, try to take the data, send them through ddplot, and specify we need to have the frame IDX on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we want to have the instance score. And then we can simply just plot it. And I need to know one package more. So here we can see how satisfied it is with the detection results in the different frames. So there seems to be something happening around here. Um, 
But yeah, let's see what we can, can do otherwise with, with the data here. One thing I would like to do is to actually filter the data. So we only uh, have those data where the instance score is above some kind of threshold that might be free. Um, because then we're a bit more sure on, on what is going on. And then to plot the data, I would like to show where the uh, beak X and Y ends up. I would also have the uh, the location of the blowhole. And similarly for the Y axis. And then use the geom segment to plot this because then we can actually see um, oh, I need to use the proper naming here. Now we actually got this uh, plot where we have the indicated direction between the, um, how to say it, um, the blowhole and the beak of the animal that starts off here and then floats in this direction. And if you compare that to, to one of the frames of the video, this has actually been inverted. Uh, so up is down, so we need to take care of that. So we can just say uh, a minus here. Uh, on both y coordinates we need a minus, like this. So now we can see how the this changes over time. For this, and we can also do some calculations on on what looks of, of interest. If we are especially interested in the direction of this, uh, one thing we could consider was to calculate this uh, head direction as um, to, to get this uh, direction through eight and two where we need to have the difference in the y coordinates. So that will be the difference between the beak and the blowhole. So we simply just subtract these two coordinates. And similarly, we need to do that for the x coordinates. And we can then use this to color this So now we can actually see, okay, what is the direction of, of this? Um, if I choose, if I had chosen a bit better color scale, it might be easier to actually see what is going on in, in the areas over here. So we can say uh, scale color um, continues, what to do there. Let's just use the Viridis. Uh, it's one of the color scales where it often can be quite easy to see what, what is going on. It's a bit hard to see over here. Um, we might be able to, to amplify that in, in a bit, but that's not the purpose of, of the, the rest of the video. So. What I wanted to demonstrate here was to take the date to apply the trained model inside sleep and then utilize it to extract uh, instances of, of the animal we want to track and get the data out of sleep and into R so we can do the plotting afterwards. So yeah, I hope you benefited from, from this part.